If you think about the transition, when I was thinking about talking with you today, I wanted to look at it as a, like a resilience building opportunity as well. Because when we move, moving across the world, it can be both really exciting for, for kids and new opportunities, but there are some skills which I think they can learn along the way or, or further develop. So I've got to talk about that today as an opportunity. So in thinking about adaptability and the expanded worldview, the research coming out at the moment is for young kids that have a chance to live overseas. Um, it, it stretches them in terms of like them being flexible in their, in their worldview, how they think about how they think about things and their exposure to other cultures. So the research coming out for young kids that come to the end of their schooling, um, they've got adaptability, they've got good social skills because they've had to mix with them and adapt and start new schools to finish and start. Um, just that bigger picture of like, oh, different cultures that do things differently compared to what I call maybe just a more narrow or, or monoculture view. So there's some real benefits uh, for kids to have the experience, although it can be challenging at times. It's certainly, it also shows us that um, family connections, you can strengthen family connection and that, and that bond because we all have the experience of traveling and moving together. Um, and certainly it can increase their independence as well. Just in terms of what they had to deal with um, and adapting and working by themselves. So you know, if we can keep that in mind as we go through, because there's some real benefits for our kids. But if you want to get to thinking about your experience when you last moved, because often when uh, moves take place, it will trigger memories from the past. Um, or bring up memories of those experiences. So I'd just like to be thinking, what were your thoughts and feelings in the lead up to the last move? And what was well and what were challenges in that previous move? Okay, I have to think about that and just talk about it in your in your groups or with us. Yeah, yeah with each other. So it will be interesting in the coming weeks as you, as you lead up that there, there's likely to be some peaks and mm -hmm. peaks and troughs, but it may tap into some of the experiences previously of leaving and some of the turmoil that can go with that both positive and negative. So you're thinking about what is resilience. And I like these two photos. It's a little bit about how you bouncing back. It's like how do you bounce back in the face of adversity those challenges. And I think kids can do that really well. Um, they've got a, some of them have a, a natural spring that there's like, okay, this has happened, so we bounce back. Other kids um, may find it more of a challenge and more demanding. And so it's like helping them through developing some of those qualities or skills which can help them um, learn that spring. And I like the sense of the tree, like bend but not broken. And some, like, sometimes we'll be stressed, the wind will blow, and it's like, do you just stand against it or do you somehow go with it and learn from that? So I'm looking at the, um, the information on resilience, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the qualities which can be helpful for, our, for the kids in the move. So the first, the first one, uh, we'll go on the, on the trapeze. So you know, this information comes from a guy called Michael Gross. Uh, he's a Melbourne-based um, parenting author and presenter. And I really like his material because it's like it's practical and it's down to earth. And he's got some great books and online stuff. So I encourage you to have a look at that stuff too. So he talks about spirit, um, skills, um, self-concept, and support. I'll go through each one. There's that sense of he talks about spirit and that sense of like don't give up. It's like can be your attitude and how you think about things, um, which is really helpful. Um, dealing with challenges. And he looks at persistence and determination. You know, that take that long-term view that in the short term there is going to be hurdles. The long-term view is like what you can gain from it but, and what that bigger picture is. And for some of you it may be like going home to Australia and resettling or for some of you don't check. Is anyone going anywhere other than home? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that question of like wherever home may be. Uh, yes. And, uh, in, with some, we'll call them our third culture kids. We have some kids that um, home can be um, not what's on the passport. Like yeah. We may identify yes. as Australian, yes. home can be yeah. that lived in multiple countries and yeah. they identify with different countries. I have a friend, a friend who's living in Beijing, their little boy at the age of three, they moved to uh, Beijing mm -hmm. and they've been over there for seven years now, they've moved to India. Home 
is Connecticut. For them. But the parliament identifies that, well, Beijing's my home. Yes. And he speaks Chinese. And yes. he misses all things Chinese. Yes. Yes. And that's why he says, I've got an American passport, but it's not home. Okay. Yeah. And I think, look, well, humour, I think in the, the face of adversity, can always be really helpful too. It's like just looking for that fun side or funny aspect of the move. Um, or things that happen which can just you know, take the edge off it. So, with all the coping skills, Mike, you were talking about that optimism. It's just, well, yeah. it might be that glass half, half full, but often, you know, kids have that capacity to go for the worst, go for the, the negative side, or you go for the worst possible, and then they make it a disaster. You know, that's very black and white, so it's all. So it's just helping both normalise the situation a little bit, that it will be normal in a transition that we'll go through you know, ups and downs and you know, things may not work out initially, but it will work okay. Mm -hmm. For some it might be, I, haven't, I don't have the best friend yet, but that doesn't mean that you won't do one yet. And it'll be it's just helping them frame it so it's not so black and white because it's that flexible thinking of it, which is helpful in times of change. Um, the social skills, I think, is an interesting one. Some, some of our kids will be naturally precarious, and other kids will be slow to warm up, and it will just take time. But I think and having those skills and like working with that, that, that sense of connection and belonging is really important, particularly in young people moving into the school. So even checking with the students, like, what if they had a chance to buddy program, a buddy system, <coughs> Is there an orientation day where the new kids get to meet each other and visit the school and just get a sense of like, where they're going? Because that can be helpful for them. Uh, and that sense of belonging is important. So checking out their CCAs and their after school activities, so helping get them connected quickly, I think is helpful for our uh, young kids. Um, and I suppose if we, if we work on our, the social skills that help seeking as well, where do they go to find stuff? Because it's helping them as well, asking other students where, where we go, where is this, um, and people in the school that they need help from. So, and I think social skills and problem solving almost go together. It's helping them work through, okay, how do I get the help I need, or how do I find things? Because it's quite empowering for kids too, because they have a sense of, okay, I'm getting on top of this. So it's encouraging that. Now, the reframing, it's, I see this. It's an aspect of that positive thinking, but no, uh, it can be like, oh, it's going to be awful, I'm never going to have friends, or I'm never going to see my friends again. That reframing can be things like, you may have, you've got a group of friends here, you will make friends, because you may have a kids here, how you do connect. So it's possible you'll have uh, friendships across the world. And it's just helping them reframe this slightly, we do have that black and white, all or nothing. Um, it's all about the time to tell us. Let's follow the next one. Okay. That self concept idea for many of our kids, I think it's about helping them develop that I can, I can do this uh, time uh, mentality. It's like I've got the, I'm confident, I can do this. Now, that self concept often gets challenged when we're placed in new situations. You know, that self doubt comes up can I do it? Um, is it possible? Will I be able to, will I be able to connect or do what I need to do? But every, every, child, every child here has transitioned once. But, yes. And I think you can call on that, but over time they have been connected with kids at the school, they've managed to change in the curriculum, um, they've been able to gone on camps in different in places that they have thought they've gone and they manage. So if we can build on the evidence um, and they'll forget the evidence in times of stress um, and it's helping pull back pull back to that and use it. Alright. So now one of the things about I suppose support, if we look at um, when we move from, from Australia or your home country there's things which you're normally connected to, like this school, it can be church in this neighbourhood, and, um, like the local area, um, it can be shopkeepers, it can be uh, coaches, you, you connect to that. And then when you uh, move to uh, somewhere like KL, um, it can be that the school becomes that hub, okay? mm -hmm. and that's the connection point, or um, the, the employer. Uh, so the connections change. You know, there may be a 
approaches or churches being connected to, but connection can be different. So we just in like in the next move, there'll be leaving like the, the school and the and, and employer and those things and where you go to next. So it's just thinking about what might what supports might you need to help get, get uh, re-establish that connection fairly fairly quickly. So I want to think about rituals. Because I think rituals in every culture we have like rituals. I know in the Australian culture, uh, look, we celebrate birthdays, we celebrate the name, we celebrate Christmas, we, um, we have Melbourne Cup Day, which is like for the first of the child, we love the horse race. But, um, <laughs> so, but there's certain rituals that we have as a culture. And here in Malaysia, it will be things like from Ramadan to Diwali to all those, those cultural things which we, we connect to. Within families, we'll have a certain ritual celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, um, it can be baptisms, christenings, whatever it is within families, there will be certain things that we celebrate. And even here in the school, we'll have um, um, like award ceremonies in the year 12 graduation. So we have certain rituals in place. So I think it can be really helpful to look at what rituals might be needed um, as part of the leaving process. Um, because in every in every culture, the rituals are all, all ways of acknowledging what has been, as well as what is to come. But it's marking that that time and that place and celebrating it. And I think in any time, kids love rituals and traditions. And if you think of like that time, because for some kids it can be the ritual of like before we go to bed, we read the story, we have a shower, we have a we have a snack, we go to bed. Kids love that routine or ask for it. So thinking about leading the process, what rituals do we have in place? So I'm going to come back to that question because I think it will be important to think about your ritual in the coming weeks of saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that I'll be talking with the kids about it, so I'll let you I'll let to speak. So next one, self-care. We all know this, we've all been on the aeroplane and they go through the, the procedure. And the procedure is always this, put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then you cool down for those around you. And I think that's a really important one for, particularly for, for you here, looking after yourself so that you can look after those around you. They did a big study this about eight years ago, but it came out of the States and they were looking at transition transition programs and families transitioning in the East Asia and Southeast Asia area. I see one of the key, um, key factors in a, in a positive or successful transition is how the mum transitions. So, no pressure on <laughs> Transition 
and I think loss comes in many forms. But, and you'll be the little things that will be, oh, that's different. Yeah. And, that, and the son of the kids may think, oh, you know, I'm not sure I'm happy about this. Because yeah. the kids were, from my experience with the, not calling the kids, but there can be things like there's the familiarity and the change in that familiarity. Like they're known by people, by people at school, probably known by the guards in the compound, probably known by the families yeah. in the compound. So the kids can yeah. always cycle that house and you'll know where they are. Yeah. Yeah. And the, so that change, but initially, for the kids, oh, they've lost that freedom, that familiarity, they can know me, I can roam. So that's a, that's a change. So another thing to, do, to think about would be things that uh, kids may have to leave behind. Now, for some, they can be the loss of pets. But pets may have to stay. For some young people, they'll attach to the housekeeper, it can be drive to the gardener, to the guards, and helping them say goodbye but to them. Uh, is really important. Yeah. And um, it can be a loss which may not be recognised. Some of you, some of you, there's, there's housekeepers and people around the compound that the kids attach to. So helping them recognise, okay, this will be different than saying goodbye is important. Yeah. So let's touch on, you know, now, I know this is in the months in the leading up to, but put that announcing move right time to announce and enough time to say goodbye and making sure they hear it from you. you know, I've got to say in China sometimes that didn't happen and the disruption or the distress that that caused that um, it was contact was made with the school but the kid didn't know and then yeah. the information was disclosed and it was like oh my god yeah. there was one case where it happened quickly and I was asked to tell the kid and he said this will go very bad I was like, this will go very badly, but they need to hear it from you as a parent. <laughs> so, yeah, so the guys have them in different ways, but for kids, it's really important that they hear it from you, that they have time to grapple with it uh, and work out how they say goodbye. So, down the, further down the bottom, I've got work, work with children to decide what goes in the shipment on the, on the plane. So, in this, in this period that you have left, and have a think about, I think there can be little things for kids which serve as like anchors or reminders of where they, where they've been, which is sort of, sort of like holds them in the next place or something safe, it can be anything from a teddy bear to a photo to something at the school, something which helps ground them to the where they've come from while they're transitioning. It's familiar and it'll just be that, oh yeah, yeah, that, that's meaningful for me. So have a think about what can be useful for them. They can take it on the plane, they can have it to be when they get to the next destination before the shipment arrives. Because there'll be that limbo period where I'll be somewhere and you don't have all the stuff on home and it just feels weird. Mm -hmm. So in the weeks leading up, so I feel like at home, our kids are so visual and use their technology mm -hmm. at the moment. So I think it can be stuff like photos and scrapbooks and for some it can be like a, a photo collage or they can be doing, they can be making a movie and visiting like, taking stuff movie of like France, places they visited. But mementos of the host country, and doing those last, like where, wherever you've been, it's a, as a family, you've enjoyed it, you like a favourite restaurant, oh, you always go to chaos, you see, or you've, places that you've been. Going to do the last as a family can be a nice way of like saying goodbye. It's like one of those little rituals as you, as you leave. Um, and it can be like gifts for friends or for, for carers. Um, it's that symbolic I kind of saying, but here's something we need to do, and I think kids get that. Mm -hmm. It's important for them. So I think if that could work for you. Come check for Have you started those last visiting places or doing tourist things? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so this is right up and uh, right up to the move. This will be happening in the next couple of weeks. But saying goodbye to your friends, and this will be the same for you do. Um, <laughs> The goodbye party's favourite share activities. Um, now, I think in that in the coming weeks, I think routine is really helpful for our kids to keep them stable. Mm -hmm. So that coming to school, being involved in all the activities, and just having that routine, get up in the morning, go to school, go to the CCAs, and keeping that going as long as you can. But the goodbye parties will, will start. Um, they might want to be sleepovers, or they're going to want to do little things you know, with their friends um, as part of it, the last. The email, the Skype, and the Instagram addresses, if you 
help them get that because it helps with that sense of connection. I did a survey for kids in Beijing, we went through the middle school and was like, what is the, one of the most helpful things um, in the provide? And it kept coming up having email, Skype, just having a, a formal gathering where I get to say goodbye and having photos. And it was consistent, but simple, but really important for them. Um, some kids, food is really important. Can you go to a favorite restaurant? You know, I think if I ever leave, it will be nice to go back and chat right to the other one. So there were certain things we knew that we need. And within that, to stay connected through real times. Because I think if you can just be talking about, oh, how, how's the move going? You know, and people talking about, um, family members talking about how to explore that, because it can help normalize that experience. Because you'll be part of them, it's excited, and then it'll be sad. Um, and then I'll feel anxious, and it's sort of normalizing that experience is helpful. For, because for some kids it can be, what's going on in here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It feels really messy, but that can be part of the process. Now, here is the <coughs> there's going to be a couple of things that we might do. We'll be able to find parties within the uh, homerooms, and they might do as a great work as well. So that we acknowledge our kids that are leaving. And we're, at the end of the year, we'll do a front of the fair assembly, and I'll show you a bit about what that will be like. Alright, so homerooms, they have a sign in the shirt, so be it. <coughs> <laughs> um, there'll be a sign in the shirt and a going away party. In the next week, I'm going to be meeting specifically with the kids that are moving countries. Because we have some kids that are moving to school, but they're moving countries quite different. So I'm going to be moving with them uh, by grade level. Now, for our middle and senior school kids, I'm going to give them a little leave as well. And it really, they, they don't have to give it back to me, but it talks about some of the things they might experience as teenagers. Feelings. Um, there's a thing they call a court raft, and it's about reconciling relationships, acknowledging friendships, looking forward to the future, how to say thanks and how to say goodbye. And I think it's a nice little model for kids to just to read through that. Okay, what can be helpful to help them make it a good goodbye? And then there's a, um, things that they consider um, to, uh, in their new school, how do I can how I reconnect, or how I connect with new, new kids in my school, and have ideas on how to help them with that. So this will come to middle and senior school kids to get them thinking about it. There'll be a little one that will be given out in, the, in about two weeks' time for the, for the junior kids. It will be about saying goodbye, and it will be about like, photos or drawings of places around the school, about friendships, favorite places around KL. So again, it's just helping them acknowledge the, the challenge yeah. and there's a space in there for, for contacts with friends oh, and for friends to write right. comments and to, right. to yeah. sign. So that will be a little book that will come to them yeah. as well. So I expect that that may be crushed in bags on the <laughs> home, but I've got a booklet for the parents as well as for how to help the parents help them <laughs> in times of transition. <laughs> so I don't know that I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to give it to you today to see how to walk through and talk to you about what we're And then in the, at the All School Assembly at the end of the year, we'll do, students are going to be called up um, onto the stage and they'll be acknowledged, a formal acknowledgement that they're in the school. And we'll do a little farewell band. Oh, it's it's yeah. nice to yeah. we'll yeah. yeah. the farewell yeah. I think they're the key things that we'll be doing uh, as part of the farewell. In the coming weeks, if there's any concerns you think, oh, they might just need to write a word with me individually about how to travel and how to because I just think transition is important and it can be called to everybody in the times. I always like, it, like you to think about the ritual of leaving and what the family has in place or what you might put in place and the coming weeks, which can help um, the feel of the leaving process. Kids love rituals, um, so I think if you can have to think about that. Now, uh, look, the future I use is just like a big long table and it's like a big community. Yeah, okay. All right. So my last one would be in thinking about the transition. Um, for me, about making a good goodbye, um, 
going through that process, although it can be sad, yeah. and it can be a mix of feelings, but if, it's, if you do it well, it can be a sense of love and you get on the plane, it's like, okay, we're, yeah. it's almost like we're, we're okay, yeah. and then we're, we're done and we're on to the, we, we move to, to the next journey. And if we do a good goodbye, it actually helps out other people with, uh, it is the hello, it's like how do I connect in my new place, and how do I plant and, and bloom in my new place. And that's what we want them to be able to do. We're connecting in a new place and, and flourishing that, that environment. So the, the farewell is part of how we set that up. So you can keep that in mind in order to not be seen as. And I'll be talking to them about that as well. It's like saying goodbye so that I feel like, yep, I've acknowledged my friends, I'm still connected, but I've got this energy.